A useful and well-known interface in c -sharp is iDisposable, which allows us, instead of releasing an object's memory manually, to release it automatically and elegantly. But soon, we'll see that it can be used for even cooler things. Let's start with a classic example. Often, when it's important for us to know how long a piece of code takes, we quickly wrap it in a stopwatch and print how long it took at the end. But isn't it a shame to bother with that when it can be done in one elegant line? But wait! How can we do it in one line if we need one line to start the stopwatch at the beginning of the code and another line to print at the end? So before we explain how, let's remind ourselves how the using keyword works in C-sharp. All it does is accept a variable that implements iDisposable, like StreamReader from the previous example, and it knows to call the dispose function of that variable at the end of the code. This way, we can use one line of using to wrap the beginning and end of a specific piece of code. Do you see where we're heading? Basically, if we create a class that in its constructor starts the stopwatch, and we'll make it implement iDisposable so that in the dispose it stops the stopwatch, we can replace the previous code with one line, which calls the constructor at the beginning, and thanks to the using, automatically calls dispose at the end. And we can even do it without parentheses with the following syntax. This time, dispose will be called when the code ends. Now let's use what we discovered for more practical events. In the next example, we want a few things to happen when the player wins. The keyboard inputs will lock. The game's UI canvas will lock and not respond to mouse clicks. And to freeze time. And finally, we'll activate the victory effects. Which, of course, after them, we want to return things to how they were. But this isn't ideal, and you may already notice the problems with the code we created. First, readability. Anyone reading this code will have to read it all to understand its essence, and also use common sense to see the logical connection between the start and end. Besides that, we are exposing the code to human errors. If there's logical importance to calling the actions in a LIFO order, last and first out, then someone in the future won't know that, unless we add a comment that the order here is critical. But that's not very polite because it requires them to read the comment. So again, iDisposable comes to our rescue. We can easily replace each line with its own disposable helper. One that locks and unlocks the keyboard inputs. The second, for locking and unlocking the UI object it receives. And the third, for freezing time. What a pleasure! In one stroke, we enforced LIFO read order, wrote reusable classes that shortened our code. And without reading, you can understand what the main part of the method is and what is secondary. So our final recommendation is to have a disposables folder in every project so everyone can easily search and use them when needed. And of course, the link to our folder is in the video description below. Enjoyed the video? Share it with your friends and show us that love with a thumbs up and subscribe. And thanks a lot for watching. We hope to see you soon in another Practic API video.